Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com. Got the first of three videos here for you looking at aspects of the mix console in Cubase 7. Uh, what I'm specifically going to be looking at is the bits of the racks system in the mix console that I haven't already looked at in the previous videos that I've done. The racks is this section here at the top of the screen in the mix console and you can turn them on and off by using this set of buttons here which are in your default bar at the top of the screen when you open Cubase. You can turn the channel racks on and off and get some nice long faders there but it doesn't really help you a great deal or uh, you can put that on. This button here enables you to select which racks you're going to display. There's quite a few. Um, we've already had a look at routing at inserts and sends, I think I've done them to death. The EQ one is fairly straightforward, although I will be returning to EQ when we have a look at the channel settings module uh, a little later down the road. But in this series, what I want to look at is the pre uh, rack, the channel strip, and the quick controls, because I think they're the ones that perhaps will be of most interest to most people. For some reason that I don't truly understand, the pre is by default switched off in Cubase when you load up one of their presets, or at least it's been switched off in any one of the presets that I've loaded, uh, which is rather bizarre because from a mixing point of view, it controls some of the most useful tools that are available to you in a DAW in terms of mixing. So I'm going to turn it on and we'll have a look see what it is. Um, now this is a, a real mix. This is of uh, Harlots and Harlequins by Havocway, which is a mix that I uh, have put on my website. Now the um, thing to note here is that the blue button is active on most channels for the pre, um, which shows you just how much I do use it. So we'll drop that down and have a look what's in it. The pre contains a high cut filter, a low cut filter or a high pass filter depending on your point of view, a gain control and your phase button. Now each of these has tremendous use. As you can see I'm a big fan of the high pass filter or the low cut. Quite often any tracks that I do use will get a healthy dose of the low cut filter. Um, this primarily is to stop the bottom end of a track getting muddied up. There's many, many good videos available on the internet singing the praises of the high pass filter. I'm a big fan of the low cut filter or the high pass filter um, because it clears out the bottom end of your mix and leaves space for the bass and the kick drum. And also when you use it in operation, you can remove a lot of signal but without any audible effect, what you're doing is reducing just low end mud that's blocking up your signal path. Clearing it out using a low cut filter gives you a lot more headroom in the mix. The gain stage is important if your track is overcooked when it's been recorded or whether you feel you need to raise the overall gain of the track as a complete track rather than individual sections of it. Um, and that enables you to balance it. And phase is something I'll be returning to on another video later when I'm looking at mixing drums specifically, but that's where it is. These controls also exist if you open the channel settings box. The pre section exists here. You've got your pre gain, the low cut, and high cut controls, and also your phase button. So that's one of the most useful bits of the mix console uh, when you come to mix a song. It's where I start when I'm mixing and it's also hidden. In the next video I'm going to take a slightly longer look at the channel strip and in our third video looking at the racks what I'm going to return to is the quick controls. So for now that's it. I hope that's piqued your interest. Until next time, take care of yourselves.